In this video I'm going to talk about the different geometry types available in Maya and I am approaching this from an entertainment industry perspective so for making uh, game assets, short films, that sort of thing. So any recommendations I make do definitely come from that perspective and are surely colored. So I'm going to start with some generic stuff that's just sort of talking about the differences but when I get into recommendations it's definitely coming from an uh, entertainment industry perspective. So uh, the three different geometry types are NURBS, polygons and subdivision surfaces. And first I'm going to start with the differences between NURBS and polygons and then get into subdiv subdivision surfaces a little bit later. So an analogy would be NURBS are like vector graphics in the 2D world whereas polygons are like bitmap graphics in the 2D world. So with vectors and NURBS uh, they are math based so when you represent a curve you can actually get as close to that curve as you want to and it will still render nice and sharp and crisp. It's the case for vectors, it's the same case for NURBS. With bitmaps you have to work at the resolution you intend uh, that object to be shown or at least the maximum um, size that that object will be shown. So in this case this was made at let's say for instance 150 by 150 or something like that. Um, and then when you zoom in closer you'll actually start to see this stair stepping or aliasing along the edges uh, where you see uh, the individual pixels being stretched. So that's why it gets soft and stair steppy around the edges. So if this was authored at a much higher resolution then you could zoom in much closer like this but then it's more for the computer to handle. Uh, the equivalent of this in the polygonal world is uh, instead of width and height as your resolution, your resolution is actually how many polygon faces you have in an object. So I'll just go ahead and get to that with a cylinder here. So this cylinder should appear um, nice and round. It should appear that this curve is actually a curve. But the closer you zoom into this object, the more you'll see, oh, actually, this curve is actually a series of straight lines or edges that are making it appear to be a curve from a distance. So uh, in this case, uh, that's an adequate resolution to be this distance away from the camera and have me still believe that this is a curved surface. Um, so if I wanted to be closer than that, I would need to, for instance, come in here and let's say, for instance, double my amount of resolution. Now I should be able to zoom in considerably closer and still have this feel like it's a, it's a curve. But I still will be able to zoom in here uh, to a point where I see, oh, okay, this is still a series of straight line edges. And here you can see how they break down. So uh, sort of no matter how high res you make this thing, at some point it will break down into straight line edges. Um, and the, at, it, it sort of gets to a point where it sort of doesn't matter. Like you're gonna, not going to get that close, so you're fine at that resolution. But a big difference is um, how, how that object behaves interactively. So let me just add a NURB cylinder here. So notice now, these will both render uh, nicely at a relatively close um, perspective. But notice here that this has uh, eight control points around it, whereas this has 48. So this is a lot more for uh, the computer to throw around interactively because right now uh, this is being rendered um, uh, sort of low res and when I actually send it to a renderer it will actually be tessellated up to a much higher level so that it'll, it will be smooth. So this is very lightweight to work with um, whereas polygons if you need to uh, work uh, with something really close have to be pretty high res and so they're heavier to work with um, interactively. So this is the equivalent of let's say for instance working with um, an image in let's say for instance Shoto Photoshop at 2048 or something like that because you need it to, uh, to be zoomed in pretty close. Whereas in a vector uh, image program you could work at you know whatever size it really doesn't matter and still render it nice and sharp. And you still have the problem of if say for instance for whatever reason you have to zoom in to your image even closer than that 2048 allows it's still going to start breaking down um, and the vector image will never break down and that's the same case between NURBS and polygons so at some point I'm going to run out of resolution here and this guy will still be happy and fine. So th these NURBS tend to be lighter to work with and also um, have the flexibility to be rendered sort of at any um, proximity. Um, but a uh, big difference um, in polygons favor would be uh, that this is one contiguous mesh. So when I select this thing it is one object. It's airtight. Basically all the vertices are fused. It is one object. Whereas with the NURBS this 
center part here is actually just the parent of these end caps and they're just sitting in the same space they're not it's really not one object at all and if I open up my outliner you'll see that the poly cylinder one object NURBS is actually a series of sub-objects. So we have the drum part and then the two caps. And again, they're just sitting in proximity. They're not even connected at all. So NURBS tend to be a whole series of sub-objects uh, that build up uh, to one final object. And, and really basic shapes are even behave like this. So a NURBS cube, for example, is actually, you see here, it's a group. And that group is of six different individual planes. So that's what a NURBS cube is. Whereas a polygon cube is a cube. It's just, you know, it's six sides of one object and it's airtight. All the vertices are welded together. So um, that's that's part of the pain of working with NURBS is um, you have to work with all these different sub-objects and then you have to get all those sub-objects to move together well. Um, so for instance if you're trying to make a deformable character you have to do all sorts of stitching and stuff like that. It's a real pain in the neck and it's not a very straightforward workflow. Whereas with polygons the workflow is actually quite straightforward, easy to understand and you can make just single contiguous mesh that is a full character for example. Whereas with NURBS, you'd have uh, tens or maybe hundreds of different um, NURBS patches that are put together to be the final object. Okay, um, so that's a that's a big difference in the polygons' favor. So the other one, uh, sort of resolution independence, would sway in the favor of NURBS, but um, you know, being easier to work with sways heavier towards polygons. Another advantage would be in terms of texturing. Uh, polygons uh, can have any any kind of layout you want for your, your UVs. So I can make one single map for this, and if I had 50 others of these, I could make them all on one map, no problem. Uh, whereas with NURBS, uh, the UVs are actually part of the surface itself. So I don't lay out UVs for NURBS. They are already laid out for me, and I just have to paint on um, the different maps uh, to put them together onto a final object. So again, I'll end up with a ton of different textures, whereas with polygons, I'll end up with one texture or however many I need. So that's definitely another uh, big difference that is in favor of polygons. So let me just show you how these work and how they're sort of essentially different. So add an, a polyplane, or a NURBS plane first rather, and then a polyplane. So if I were to grab they have different um, names for components. CVs is the equivalent of vertices. So I'll just grab the center CV and move that up. And as you can see, by default, it um, it creates a nice smooth uh, path. Whereas with polygons, if I grab that center vert and move it up, I have a straight line. So just the edge connects uh, from vert to vert, and that's what I get. Just a basically a straight line. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a big difference, that, that nerves tend to be smooth by default. Uh, this is, of course, at uh, a curve degree of 3, which is the default in Maya. You can go higher or you can go lower, and you can make um, nerves sort of behave just like the poly is if you make it linear. But by default, it's a, uh, it's a surface degree of 3 here. So it, will make, it tries to make everything nice and smooth. Um, so, and let me just show you on the rendering thing that if I were to come in here and render this now, uh, at first this is going to render uh, a little bit on the ugly side, but I can make some changes in the attribute editor. If I pull down here to tessellation and I display my render tessellation, you actually see uh, what it does when it goes to render. And then I can override my global um, set up here on a per object basis or I could do this to the global as well but my curve tolerance here let's say for instance I just push this up to highest then see here in the in the in the cap how that went from sort of being uh, kind of segmented to being a lot smoother looking like that and so now when that one renders it'll look a lot smoother and uh, I'm sort of not limited to to these either like I could push this up to five based on the slider but uh, that's just a slider limitation. I could push this up to any number that I want. And then when I render this, it'll be nice and sharp. And again, I could zoom in really, really close on this. And um, 
and when I see straight lines like this, I could continue to push this up until it's smooth enough that I could render even from this perspective. And at, at this point, I already, I'm already i so close that I actually already have my near clip plane cutting into this thing. But as you can see, you're basically re render or uh, tessellation independent, resolution independent. So you can make, you can tessellate up any NURBS object to any degree that you want to. And moving this number of polygons around a scene is a lot um, more work for the computer. So this is what it's going to do when it renders but this is what it's going to show me interactively. So you can see how lightweight that is compared to this. So again, uh, with NURBS, you can do that to any single object that you create, any irregular object or whatever. With polygons, you really can't. You can continue to add smoothing to it uh, and that sort of thing, but um, this is the way these two um, work by default. So it ha I'd have to really tessellate this thing up and deal with that um, interactively. So. Um, what this is all boiling down to right now is NURBs tend to be smoother and render um, a lot crisper. Polygons are a lot easier to work with. So uh, it was at, at that point that subdivision surfaces were added sort of as a hybrid. So I'll just add a subdiv plane now and grab the center vertex of this and move it up. And it won't behave exactly like the NURBs. Uh, it's the layout's not quite the same. But um, this is meant to be uh, the ease of working with polygons but with the smoothness and sort of um, uh, resolution independence of NURBS. So these are lightweight to work with and they um, will still render nice and, uh, nice and clean but uh, they're much easier to work with. But I feel like Maya's implementation of subdivision surfaces is pretty flawed and I'll show you why. So I'm just going to display this finer and this is how this is meant to work, by the way, that you right click and display coarser and finer and make big changes at the coarser level and make finer level changes at the uh, finer uh, degree that you've resolved down to. So now I have more verts that I can use to influence this mesh. And I'll just select the center vert again and I'll right click and this time I'm going to choose refine selected, which is how this is meant to be again. So you uh, you sort of tessellate up where you need it, need more resolution. but see how by refining that I end up with this mesh that sort of uh, has these holes in it. This is actually just a display issue. So these holes aren't really here. It's just that the display hasn't uh, updated. But this is a this really helps highlight why um, I don't much care to work with um, the subdiv surfaces that Maya has implemented. They create very awkward topology. See these hanging edge loops? Like this edge loop should come all the way to the edge here. But the point of subdivs is you're creating um, extra resolution only where you need it. But a consequence of that is you create really bad topology that's very hard to work with on a deformable mesh. So I would need to completely retopologize this if I needed this to deform. And by deform I mean move in a way other than by its transform. So a, on a smooth skin or with a non uh, nonlinear deformer or a lattice or something like that. So again, if I go down in smoothness and then back up, you'll see that this is actually uh, fine. There's nothing wrong with this when it's displayed at um, its smooth quality it's actually fine it doesn't have holes in it but the topology is still bad it still have these hanging edges that don't connect through and it's just basically bad topology so uh, that's what subdiv surfaces are supposed to be is sort of a hybrid between these um, these different types uh, that sort of captures the best of both worlds kind of idea but again I don't like Maya's implementation because I don't I don't much care for the bad topology that it creates so Maya also has one additional feature for um, polygons, which is called Smooth Mesh Preview. Just as with uh, setting 1, 2, and 3 for NURBS, that's 1, 2, 3, so different display levels, and then 1, 2, 3 for subdiv surfaces, polygons have that as well. Uh, 1 is just the cage, 2 is the cage and the smoothed, and 3 is just the smoothed object. So this is what this is, is actually just a preview. So this is showing me what, what happens to my object uh, if it's smoothed down. So this is the, the exact same thing as uh, going into the mesh uh, level here and going to smooth. And in, by default, it'll basically be a division level of two. 
So that will be basically the same thing that I was getting out of my smooth mesh preview, except I'm actually adding the geometry. So if I go back to smooth mesh preview, the advantage of smooth mesh preview is instead of having all that geometry, which is a pain to work with, I, I end up with very few control points like this. So now I can influence a higher res uh, curve um, structure with one or very few control points. So that in that way, it's working very much like the nerves. So smooth mesh preview is actually sort of um, the easiest way to work with um, any geometry type in Maya. It's very easy to create organic shapes uh, using this method. And polygons, in, to, in, to me anyways, are just much easier to work with. Um, so sometimes I'll find myself needing to create something out of, uh, out of curves. So uh, I'll end up doing a loft or, or something like that. Um, and uh, just know that anything that you do in the surfaces menu here, anything that would typically be for creating NURB surfaces, you have the option to output polygons directly um, or you can output NURBs and convert later. Um, so anything that you can do in the surfaces menu actually can go um, into the uh, poly world to uh, finish it out for texturing, for um, adding other elements into it, for extrusions, all this kind of stuff that's a pain with NURBs is actually very simple with polys. And the conversion process is uh, really sweet too, going to polygons. So any NURBs object can be converted, so under modify, convert, just NURBs to polys here. So you can convert, basically anything can be converted to polygons. And what I'd recommend is, uh, by default, this will start out with triangles and standard fit, and these things are really difficult to understand exactly what you're going to get out of it. Uh, what I would typically recommend is just go out to control points when you do conversions between NURBs and polys. Then what you'll end up with is a poly object that looks pretty crusty um, when it's not smooth mesh previewed, but when I press 3, it'll start more approximating what uh, what's going on here in the NURBS. Uh, so it's not exact, so I'll need to grab uh, grab the vert and move that vert down to sort of uh, get around the same height here. But ultimately what I have here is basically the same form, but now this one's polys and this one's NURBS. So this one's still a pain to work with. I can't uh, do a lot of the stuff that I would want to be able to do as far as making a contiguous mesh for a character or something like that. Uh, whereas this one is polygons, but that has the same number of vertices. So uh, the control points on this, uh, the verts, it has basically the same number as I have um, over here on my NURBS mesh. So um, that's basically my recommendation is stick with polys for nearly everything. If you need to make something uh, in uh, with curves, uh, which again there are a lot of good tools over here for, uh, for making uh, objects with curves, Typically what I do is create those objects, maybe I'll even stick with NURBS for a short bit, refine them, and then just convert those over to polygons to continue working with them.